everyone, we're from the City of Greater Dandenong Libraries. We're so glad you came to join us today. I'm Dione. I'm Nat. And I'm Lauren. And we're sitting here having an enjoyable time knitting and crocheting. And we are actually, can you guess it? Maybe not. Neurons. So neurons are part of our brain and our spinal nervous system. And we're hoping to share, to share some of the important work that is being done by neurosciences around Australia and around the world. And we're hoping that this is a good way for you to think about your neurons and your mental health when you get a chance to sit down and knit or crochet or even just twirl a neuron yourself. I am using a single crochet, which is through, yarn over, back through, yarn over again. Simple as that, all the way around, making sure to count all my stitches so I can get the shape that I want in order to make my neuron. Neurons come in lots of shapes and sizes, depending on what part of the brain the neuron is found in and what purpose the neuron serves. Dendrites which branch off the main area of the neuron, a part of the cell body. Dendrites receive messages from other cells. Axons are covered with a myelinated sheath, which is a fatty substance that insulates the axons and allows signals or electrical impulses to be transmitted along the axon really quickly. The space where an electrical impulse or communication is sent or received from one cell to another is called a synapse. Well, I had a look at the patterns and I decided that I would try the crochet one. So I did the pyramid crochet neuron and I'm kind of repeating it. Um, if you're experienced at crocheting, you can just um, take the pattern and make a little ball any which way you like and then make an axon. You can do just with a chain stitch all the way up there or you can do a chain stitch and come back and then sew it together a bit like um, what Nat did with the knitting and you end up with a little bit of a tube and I've put a, um, a bit of wire in there to keep it a bit stiff. Um, so yeah, at the moment I'm just kind of going around the base of what's going to be the body of the neuron. The surface of the brain is folded into ridges and grooves. So just fold it, giving the brain a high surface area to volume ratio. And so this means that although the brain is small enough to fit inside a human skull, the surface of the brain, if you trace each ridge and groove, is much larger than the seeds. Neurons are cells that exist most densely in the brain. Scientists estimate that an average adult has 86 billion neurons and many, many more synapses. And remember, that's the places where the individual neurons connect and communicate with each other and with other types of cells. It's estimated that the adult brain contains around 100 trillion neural connections. So what part of the neuron are you crocheting right now? So I'm doing the body, the cell body, so that's where all the information um, for the cell is kept, so that's where the DNA is, um, the little mitochondria that uh, energise the cell, stuff like that. The um, axon is where the actual electrical impulse is sent, so it's a very, very fast way of sending a message across um, the body, so in the spinal cord, you can imagine it will travel meters really, really quickly. And then when it gets to the end, the neurons actually don't touch each other. They have what's called a synaptic gap. And so they don't quite touch each other and they send a message. Most commonly, I think it's chemical, but they can send an electrical message across as well. And um, one of the key things I remember about that is that a lot of your painkillers like um, paracetamol and stuff like that actually help block the sending of that chemical message so that you don't get the pain jumping from one axon to the next and then your brain just doesn't know you're in pain. Wow, it's really cool, I had no idea. So 
so the neuron actually does quite a lot of things for us, huh? It does, and it's, I mean, it's primary function is to send a message really, really fast. So you, neurons will send a message of information. So that's a sensory neuron, which might send the information from the outer part of your body up to the brain. So it will tell you that you've been touched or that you've, you know, touched something really hot. And so you want that information sent to your brain as quickly as you can. So that's why the electrical message is sent. You can imagine if you tried to send the same message through the bloodstream or the circulatory system, but that would actually quite take, take a bit of time. The other um, direction that messages go is that you might want to send a message um, to move your little toe or your finger or your neck. And so the messages originate at the brain and head out to the muscle and they um, tell the muscle to contract and then you can move your limbs. So if I didn't have a neuron, I wouldn't be able to do anything, really. You'd be pretty stuck. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be a whole lot of skeleton and muscle not doing much. Well, then, thank you for the neuron. Hooray <laughs> <laughs> right, for <the> neuron. <laughs> you may have heard the brain referred to as grey matter. Scientists actually refer to areas dense with neurons as the grey matter in our brains, and the areas heavy with axons as white matter. That's because when scientists look at the brain when cut open, the areas that have more neurons look grey and the areas with more axons look white due to the white colour of the fatty myelin sheet. Unlike other cells in the body, if a neuron dies, it cannot be regrown. However, neural connections can be developed and strengthened throughout the course of one's life. I am actually knitting the axon part of the neuron. Uh, in the pattern it says that you can knit a long skinny strip and sew it together. It also says you can knit what's called an I-cord and that's what I'm doing now. So an I-cord is a really fast way to knit a long cylindrical tube, but you do need uh, a, one special tool and that's what I'm using right now, which is the um, double pointed needle. And so what you do is you cast on your four stitches and then you push the stitches down to the other end of the needle and knit those stitches. When you normally knit, um, you knit, generally knit back and forth. So you knit some stitches and turn the work around and knit the other side. But with an I-cord, you just knit the stitches, push them down to the other end and knit again. And so you're essentially making a spiral yeah. up and Yeah, so then it's, uh, Sort of, it's, a, it's sort of a hollow tube, but then you can insert a piece of wire down. Um, and I cords are really good for the ends of scarves. You can hang pom-poms off them. You can use them for a variety of things. And then what's happening is as I'm knitting, the, I pull the working yarn across to the back and that cinches the four stitches in and makes a long skinny cylinder. You can do it with um, more stitches and it'll produce a thicker, wider tube. But this is good for the axon of the neuron. Huh. I see you've got a bit of a switch in that one down the bottom. Down. Oh, down here? Yeah, down there. That's the um, neuron's body. So what I will do is once I finish knitting the eye cord or the axon and the little axon branches, then I will stuff this with some, oh, you can use plastic bags or I use scrap bits of material or scrap yarn ends. I'll sew up the body like that sew the top up and then I'll start um, making the dendrites which I've done on this one here so pick up some stitches at each end I think I did about three stitches for each dendrite and then knit the eye cords yeah. and then that one there is the one with the completed eye cord uh, the completed axon and with the little axon branches as well yeah yeah so the axon is where the electrical message is sent in a real nerve, isn't it? That's right, and it's covered in a myelinated sheet yeah. to protect the messages as they travel. And they say that, like, generally, if you damage a nerve, they don't grow back, but I have seen some research where they say if they are a myelinated um, nerve, it sometimes can grow back through where the my myelin leaves like a little pathway. Yeah, and they also um, can be strengthened over time as well. So that's a positive thing. Thank you for
for joining us here today. We hope you learned something and are looking forward to making some neurons of your own. Maybe a whole brain's worth. Don't forget, you can always learn more about the Humble Neuron from the books that we have in the library or all our online resources. We'll see you next time. Bye! Bye! Bye.